In this episode, we'll take a look at the Rode VideoMic NTG. First of all, this entire episode is recorded with the video mic NTG boom just out of the frame on a microphone stand right here. And that's running into the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. That's what you're hearing right now. We have not done any sort of post-processing. It is loudness normalized to minus 23 LUFS and nothing else has been done to it. So you can hear what it sounds like directly out of the camera. First, let's get you some indoor samples compared to the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and the Deity VMic D3 Pro. This is a sample with the microphone on top of the camera. It is approximately six feet from me, so this is the video mic NTG. Again, going directly into the Cinema 4K, Pocket Cinema 4K, and this is what you can reasonably expect. And this is actually probably better than what you can expect in most households <laughs> because we actually have some treatment here. We have sound blankets on either side of me, one behind the camera, a rug on the floor here, and then a blanket down behind me over here as well. So this is not the ideal. So if you're gonna do a lot of talking head and interviews, this is where you're gonna wanna boom that microphone up above your talent. Here's a sample of the Rode VideoMic NTG. This time it's boomed just above my head right here. So it is probably 18 inches from my mouth. And this is an ideal su situation uh, in terms of the distance of the mic. You're gonna get much better response here as you can tell from this particular case. So this is going into the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K using the Rode VC1 extension cable. Let's give you a few moments of silence here so you, we can use that to evaluate the practical self noise of this microphone in this room with this camera. So the camera had the audio input just to kind of give you some background. The microphone set to 10 out of 15 and the camera had its uh, input set to 68 as I recall. So just to give you a sense for where we're at. Okay, now we have the Deity VMic D3 Pro. Boom, just out of the frame here as another reference to uh, sample against the VideoMic NTG. Um, we have this set to nine out of 10 on its gain, and we have the gain level set to 65 on the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So this is where we're gaining right now. This is a um, very similar microphone. I think this one runs uh, right around the same price, maybe a little bit less at this point. And you get it for as little as $200 US. So um, this has a lot of the features. In fact, some people say that a lot of the features we're now seeing on the VideoMic NTG look to be inspired by the Deity VMic D3 Pro. And then they added a few additional things as well. So let's give you a few moments of silence just to use that in our practical noise floor comparison. Here's a sample with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Now, this is the older generation VideoMic Pro, and this is the, by that I mean the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, older than the NTG. <laughs> this one is also boom just out of the frame here and also going into the video camera here, which is a pocket cinema camera 4K. In this case, we have the input level set to 60 on the camera and plus 20 on the VideoMic Pro Plus, just to get about the same levels there we were peaking somewhere around minus 18 to minus 12 dB. So that's what we were looking for. This is what it sounds like. Now, this microphone is a little bit different. It, the one spec it does have that the video mic or the video mic NTG um, can't handle as much of is sound pressure levels. That is to say, this can actually handle larger sound pressure levels, which means it might be a better choice if you're gonna be recording really loud sound sources. So for those that, go and record loud concerts and things of that nature. This one might be a better option for that. But again, I think in those cases, I might actually prefer the stereo video mic instead. So in any case, here's a sample of what this sounds like. Let's give you a few moments of silence so you can hear what that sounds like.
Now we'll do the same thing, but in a much harsher environment. <laughs> Outdoors with a large US interstate behind us, again for the same three mics. So here's our first sample with the Rode VideoMic NTG mounted on top of the camera. And how far away would you say I am here? Probably six feet, six, seven six feet? Six or seven feet. Six or seven feet. We have Interstate 80 behind us here in the United States, uh, where there's a little bit of traffic as you can see. And so this is to give you a sense for what it sounds like mounted on top of the camera at about that distance, again, six or seven feet. So the reality is, is that when you mount it on the camera, it's going to sound like it's mounted on the camera. If you're looking for that rich, clean dialogue like you hear in most of the movies, you're going to need to get it off the camera and now do some samples with that. All right, now we've got the microphone off of the camera on a boom pole. I'm just using the Rode uh, extension cable. I'll put a link for that down below. I don't remember what it's called. Um, so this is normally what we would do. We would boom up above like this, and this would give us a much cleaner sound as you're probably hearing here. So this is the Rode VideoMic NTG. We have a semi truck driving behind me right now. So this should be doing a bit, little bit better of a job isolating just my voice and getting rid of some of the ambient sound that we don't want. Next up, we have the Deity VMic D3 Pro on a boom pole here. And uh, we do have a fur cover on it as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and boom that above me again. We're at the same distance, about, I would say, seven feet from the camera. And uh, this is what this sounds like. I've got it boomed just above me, down at an angle toward me. And again, we have I-80 behind us. Hopefully we'll have some traffic come by. I mean, we've got cars going by, but we've got a, we've got a car, sorry, a truck coming here too. So that'll give us a sense for how this does in terms of real world isolating. So I'm gonna keep this going. Here comes the truck. And you can probably see it right behind us here. There it goes. And we're probably 300 feet from the interstate? 300 feet uh, from the interstate. And then we've got a road back here and a road right here as well. So there's a sample from the Deity VMic D3 Pro. Okay, now this time we're using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is the previous generation video mic from Rode. And again, similarly, if we boom it from above here, something like that, is that in the frame? Nope, okay, we're just out of the frame here. And boom above, kind of down at an angle like this. This will help isolate some of the noise. And this is a comparison versus the new Rode VideoMic NTG, just for comparison's sake. Oh, here comes a semi. Here comes a semi. It's gonna take a second here. Here it comes. Okay, so I'll keep talking while this semi drives by. Just so you can get a sense for what that sounds like when we have a semi passing by on I-80. And there we go. We also did a little bit more of a scientific test on the polar pattern of these different microphones. What we did is we boomed each of the mics on a mic stand and we rotated the mic uh, towards and away from a speaker, a Bluetooth speaker that was playing back white noise. And from that, we were able to measure how much rejection the back of the mic had relative to the front of the mic. And what we found that was quite interesting was that the video mic NTG had a difference of 21.5 decibels from the front of the mic to the back of the mic. The video mic Pro Plus had a difference of 15 dB and the D3 Pro from Deity had a difference of 13.5 dB. What all this means in practical terms is that you're getting more isolation from the Rode VideoMic NTG, which means you're gonna hear less of the off-axis sound, the sound in your environment, and you're gonna hear more of the person you're trying to record. That's a very good thing. Now, one thing that's also very important when you're talking about off-axis sound capture on microphones, including shotgun microphones, is that sometimes, especially shotgun microphones, tend to have this rather odd frequency response when you're capturing sounds from off axis and they can start to sound like alien sounds <laughs> but we did some measurements here on that as well and i say there's probably a case for the video mic ntg being a little bit smoother than the other two not worlds apart difference what that means in practical terms is the ntg is going to pick up sounds that are off axis in a little bit more of a natural way one new feature that we have not seen on other camera top shotgun microphones is you can use this as a USB microphone. 
Here's a sample recording using the VideoMic NTG as a USB microphone directly into my computer. This would be a really nice setup for someone who's recording a podcast sort of on a mobile basis with their laptop or perhaps someone that's even streaming on a mobile basis. So you connect directly via USB. Normally when you're using the microphone directly into your camera, you're just using an analog audio cable like this. And what that means in practical terms is that the microphone is capturing the audio it's doing a little bit of amplification here up to microphone level and it sends that on an analog basis over to your camera which then amplifies it up to line level and converts it to digital and then records it with the video. The difference here when you use this directly connected to your computer is that the microphone is handling a lot of that. So not only is it capturing the audio, converting it to a, an analog signal and bumping it up to microphone level, then it converts it up to line level and then digitizes it so changes it from analog to digital and then sends it via the USB cable into your computer so it handles a lot of that now you can, as you might imagine that can be a pretty delicate process there needs to be some really good design to result in high quality audio and it sounds like so far that the video mic NTG is doing a pretty nice job like the DoD D3 Pro the video mic NTG has the ability to auto detect what you've plugged your microphone into. So whether that be a camera, an audio recorder, or perhaps your mobile device, your phone, whatever it is, it can sense what it is it's plugged into and adapt itself to work with that particular device. Very nice feature. In our case, we confirmed that it works with the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, the 6K version of the same camera, the Panasonic GH5 and the GH5S. The video mic NTG also has a variable gain dial. It goes from one to 15. And this is a nice feature because you don't just have the two settings like you did on the Video Mic Pro and the Video Mic Pro Plus. A lot more options to kind of fine tune your overall gain structure and your overall input level, if you will. So that's a really nice feature as well. Now that output jack, the 3.5 millimeter output jack, is actually also a headphone jack when you're using this as a USB microphone. Like the Video Mic Pro Plus and the Deity D3 Pro, the Video Mic NTG also has the ability to automatically power itself on and off. However, I think it's better implemented than the VideoMic Pro Plus, where on that microphone you had to actually basically turn it into a standby mode. And if you left it in the standby mode all the time, it would run through its battery in just a couple of days. On the VideoMic NTG, you don't have to leave it in a standby mode. When you power on your camera or whatever it's plugged into, and that device feeds it what's called plug-in power, which most devices do with a microphone input, then the microphone can sense that and automatically turns itself on works very nicely and I think it's a nice step forward from the video mic pro plus speaking of power the microphone has an inbuilt lithium-ion battery which lasts for 30 hours now I haven't run through a full 30 hours of testing yet but it's definitely tracking that direction and so that looks like a positive thing to charge that internal battery you do that with the USB-C port on the side of the microphone it takes about two hours to charge from totally empty to totally full the microphone also comes with a Rycote Lyre shock mount, and this is a nice step forward also from the Video Mic Pro Plus, and it's actually very similar to the one that we saw with the Deity D3 Pro. A couple of nice features. Number one, it has a 3 8 inch threaded tap on the bottom, so you can connect it to a proper boom pole if you're going to use it that way. And also, you can move the entire assembly forwards or backwards to get it out of the way of the viewfinder on your camera or to get it out of the shot if it's sticking too far over the front of the lens and you're shooting wide angle. Just like the previous video mics from Rode, it has a high pass filter. In this case, you have settings for 75 hertz and 150 hertz. So if you are shooting out in the wind, you can turn those on to kind of reduce some of that rumble you might get. It also has a minus 20 dB pad. So if you're shooting something that's super, super loud, this can help in those situations. It has a high frequency boost option, so if you're shooting outdoors and you have one of the fur wind covers on, you tend to lose a little bit of the high frequency response in any microphone under those circumstances. This has a little boost feature so you can get some of those back. It also has a safety channel recording feature, that is to say, on the left channel it will record whatever you set the gain dial to, and on the right channel it will record the same thing except at minus 20 dB from that. So if you do clip on your main channel, your right channel will still be good and you can cut that in and post and repair that without losing that audio. The microphone is all aluminum construction. It weighs only 94 grams and is very small. Now, when I first heard that it was aluminum, I was a little bit worried about how it would handle RF interference. But here's a little test we did with that as well using the Rodelink wireless transmitter right next to the microphone. 
And this is an interesting one because when we did the same test with the Deity D3 Pro, we actually got some interference. Now we could fix that by moving the transmitter maybe just three feet away from the microphone and everything was fine. But in this case with the Rode, we didn't pick up any radio frequency interference. Okay, all right, we have a wireless boom set up here, pretty tight in the car. Rode Link from the Video Mic NTG going to the Rode Link receiver on the Panasonic GH5S here. Let's see if we get any interference here. Now this is pretty close. Normally what I would try to do is, and I may try this as well, put an extension cable between the microphone and the transmitter. Just to, uh, but this is kind of the acid test here. Are we gonna get any RF interference this way? Let's see what we get. Now, of course, no microphone has meters, at least none that I know of. Can't think of any. <laughs> and this doesn't either, but it does have a clip warning indicator, which is really helpful. A little visual indicator that says, hey, you might be getting close to clipping. Might be important to turn your gain down. Now, I wanna clarify something. In the Rode marketing materials, when they announced the VideoMic NTG, I think some people were a little bit confused. One of the things they said was that the VideoMic NTG shared the same revolutionary acoustic design of the new Rode NTG5, which is a much more expensive microphone. We're talking about something that's twice the price of the VideoMic NTG. Now, from what I can tell, what that refers to is the acoustic design of the microphone body itself, the little holes you see along the interference tube. That's what they're talking about. It's sharing with the Rode NTG5. It does not have the same radio frequency bias design that the Rode NTG5, NTG3, and NTG8 have. So don't make the assumption that you're getting a Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone, a $500 microphone, at half the price that can also go on your camera. It's, it's not the same thing. It probably wouldn't handle the high humidity situations that the NTG5, 3, and 8 can handle, but it is a good microphone. So I just didn't want people to be confused that you're getting the exact same thing. It is not the exact same thing. Another very important difference is that the NTG5, 3, and 8 have balanced XLR outputs, while this has an unbalanced 3.5 millimeter output. It's made for feeding the audio directly into your camera. Those other microphones are really made for feeding either into a professional grade camera or into a professional grade audio recorder. In our indoor samples, we also got some practical noise floor tests. And what we found is that the VideoMic NTG came in at minus 74 dB RMS, whereas the VideoMic Pro Plus came in at minus 76.5 dB RMS. And the Deity D3 Pro came in at minus 69 dB RMS. Now, all of those are very good and very usable. Now, as I mentioned before, the output on the VideoMic NTG is a 3.5 millimeter unbalanced output. It's made for going directly into your consumer grade camera like a GH5, pocket cinema camera, so on and so forth. That is an important distinction again between the NTG5, 3, and 8 and other professional grade microphones with XLR outputs which have balanced outputs. And the major difference you're going to see there is that a balanced output you can run a longer cable with less risk of picking up interference. That's really the difference. A lot of people assume you get better audio quality Eh, maybe, maybe indirectly, but not directly. It's mainly about being able to run long cables. Now, that's where this can get interesting here. So in this case, I'm using the VideoMic NTG on a boom stand. Actually, it's just a microphone boom stand, like the kind you'd see on a stage at a concert, a $25 stand. And we'll put a link up here for a video we did where we showed you exactly how to set this up and what you'll need to do it for less than $30 US. This is the way I would recommend using this, and we're using the Rode VC1 extension cable to run it back to the camera. Now, if you're going to be using this microphone on a boom pole, like to hand boom for a narrative film, then you this may not be the best choice, because, or you're going to want to keep the cable length relatively short, because unbalanced cables can pick up more interference or have a greater risk of picking up more interference. So you just have to be really careful with that. If you are in a situation where you're gonna be running a boom pull by hand often, I'd probably look at the NTG5 instead. Now, because this is a microphone with a USB-C input, you can also do firmware updates, which is very interesting. And in fact, they're already at the time of this review on firmware version 1.1.1, where they've added some uh, functionality to be able to work with additional cameras in terms of using the auto on off feature and they've also optimized its ability to work with the Panasonic GH5 cameras, which have really hot inputs. So it's really nice that they can do firmware updates to work with newer cameras as they come out. If vlogging's your thing, I think this is a pretty good setup. You can see here, we're within probably two feet of the, the microphone itself. And so this is what you can realistically expect. It's when you get farther away than that, when you have it on the camera, 
things become a little problematic. So all of the other video here where I'm talking in my studio, that's all recorded with the camera maybe five or six feet away, and then the microphone is boomed above me on a little microphone stand. This could also be used for capturing what I would call scratch or reference audio. So if you put it on top of your camera and you do have a proper uh, audio rig set up where someone's operating sound and capturing audio, this will capture the reference audio, which will make it easier to sync up in post. It's also good for talking head, but again, I would highly recommend if you're doing a talking head like this, booming the microphone much closer to your talent if you can. And again, that video in the corner here will show you exactly how to do that. Can also be really helpful for solo shooters that just don't have the ability to run a separate microphone and actually properly boom it over your talent. And also if you've got the camera on a gimbal. Now, big question, how does this compare to the Deity D3 Pro? It's a big question I know that a lot of people are going to ask. Let's talk about a few of those things. First of all, as I mentioned before, this does not have a balanced output, but the Deity D3 Pro can actually be converted into a balanced output with the included location kit. And what that does is it you output via 3.5 millimeter and then there's a little XLR adapter which adapts it into a balanced output. So if you do need to do a longer cable run, the D3 Pro might be a better option. One thing that the VideoMic NTG has that the D3 Pro does not have is the ability to be a USB microphone. And from what I can tell, it's a really great sounding one. So that's a really nice option if you need that option as well. The D3 Pro sounded a little more bassy to me. Um, but let your ears be the guide based on the samples you heard. Let your ears choose which one sounds best to you. And then finally, the VideoMic NTG seemed to fare better in our RF interference tests than the D3 Pro did. The D3 Pro actually did pick up some interference when we had the Roadlink transmitter right next to it. Again, once we moved it three or four feet away, it was fine. But if you are planning to use this as a wireless boom mic, that's a consideration as well, where the VideoMic NTG seems to do a little bit better at radio frequency immunity. And then how does the VideoMic NTG compare to the previous generation Rode VideoMic Pro Plus? Well, there are a couple differences there as well. The NTG seemed to be a little bit more articulate, especially in those outdoor samples when we had the fur cover on it. Uh, that can pull down some of the high frequency response and it can start to sound a little muffled. And I think that we definitely, I heard a difference certainly between the VideoMic NTG and the VideoMic Pro Plus. Now the VideoMic Pro Plus also has a high frequency boost option, so maybe it's an option or an issue, maybe it's not an issue for you, but I overall like the sound of the VideoMic NTG a little bit better. One thing that's a big advantage with the VideoMic NTG is you can move that shock mount forward or backwards, adjust it however you need it based on your particular camera rig. That was a big complaint that a lot of people had about the VideoMic Pro Plus. That problem appears to be solved with the NTG. Now, this was interesting. The VideoMic Pro Plus actually can handle, based on its specs, more sound pressure levels, louder sound sources before clipping, which I thought was interesting. So if you are going to be recording a lot of really loud sound sources, you might find that the VideoMic Pro Plus is a better fit for you. Now let's talk about the cons. First of all, for me, the number one was that there's no battery meter. Now there is a single LED and it changes color but I, I never find that as useful because I'm always trying to, I'm like second guessing, well, I have a lot of equipment and I don't remember what this one does when it's running low on battery. Obviously when it's red, I think you're gonna be just about out, but I'd really like to have something that's a little easier to read. I know, a little bit picky. Secondly, it does not have a balanced output. I'm told by Road to keep your eyes peeled. They may have a solution for that in the future. I wasn't real clear on what they were saying or, exactly what's coming, but for right now, if you do need to do long cable runs, this may not be your best bet. I would look instead at the Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone. And then finally, in this world that we live in presently, having a lot of e-waste is not a great thing. As far as I can tell, this battery is not user replaceable, and I don't know whether Rode has a replacement program as yet, so that's something to consider as well. The price of the microphone seems pretty favorable. At the time of this review, it's about $249 US, and it does come with a one-year warranty that's extendable to 10 years if you register your microphone after you purchase it, which is a industry-leading warranty. It's fantastic. So there's a look at the Rode VideoMic NTG. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.